Welcome back, everybody, to another long-awaited Cedar Flags episode. If you haven't noticed, I've been on a little bit of a hiatus. If you follow me on Twitter or are in my Discord, you probably know what's been going on. But before I get into all of that, let's go ahead and talk about what we're doing in this episode. We are going to be working on a couple buildings outside of the park gates. And in the game, it's going to serve a little bit of a purpose, but these are going to be group sale type building. So uh, in a real theme park, you'd have a group sale ticket office where like big, large groups would walk over and get their discounted tickets or if they reserve them or however it works. Uh, I think I've only done it once in real life and usually I'm not in charge of picking up the tickets, so I'm not exactly sure what goes on over here. But in the game, these buildings are actually going to hide uh, a couple more sets of guest spawners. So. As you can see, we are working again with some of the uh, very annoying pathing mechanics, but we'll be building this throughout. But I do want to talk a little bit about why there was such a gap in episodes here. And a lot of that had to do with my busy schedule through the month of November. I was out of town a couple times and then, of course, the holidays came up and of course, everybody came in for the holidays. So I didn't have a lot of spare time. And then I was like, all right, this is gonna be great. After the holidays, I'll be able to jump back in and tackle the next Cedar Flags episode. And as it kind of happens, um, the, the people, seeing all the people for the holidays brought some illness. So I got another really terrible cold and I'm still feeling some of the effects of that on my voice. So hopefully this episode isn't too weird. If I sound weird, that's why I'm getting over it, but it's been a pretty tedious task there. But yes, a uh, little bit of an unfortunate event there. But we're back. I've been trying to get back into the streaming game as well over on Twitch, doing just some oddball games here and there that aren't related to the channel. So that's been fun. If you wanna check those out, the link as always is in the description. But I'm hoping to get back on a regular schedule once again. And I will, I guess we should probably talk about what's been going on in Cedar Flags. And I don't know if you've seen anything, you might catch glimpses of it in this time lapse, but we did a live stream here on YouTube for some Cedar Flags building, which was actually really fun. A lot of people showed up for that. We had a really fun time, at least I did. Um, but no, we were doing a lot of buildings outside of, or not buildings, a lot of building outside of the gates of the park. And we were basically just doing a lot of just tedious stuff. So the parking lot is something that we worked on. It's still not finished. So I am planning on doing yet another live stream for that coming up, hopefully within the weekend. I'm, I'm trying to only stream this kind of work on weekends. So I know I have a lot of like EU or European followers. So I, I do want to be able to have some time when you guys can join in if you're over in, overseas. So yes, uh, hopefully on the weekends again, a uh, shameless plug for Twitter. So follow me on Twitter if you ever wanna know when I'm gonna be streaming next. I always put something over there. That's probably the go-to spot for getting some updates on the channels and to catch live streams and that kind of stuff. But yes, hopefully coming up in the next couple weekends, I do think I don't have anything going on. So hopefully we'll get some more of these streams done. And I do like doing some some stuff on the YouTube streams that we're not really going to be doing for this like episode work, because for whatever reason, I've talked about this in the live streams. Uh, YouTube doesn't allow me to download my own live streams um, in full 1080p. It only comes down in 720p, which is very unfortunate, and I just don't want to upload 720p videos. So yes, a lot of the work that we're doing on the live streams are just things that I, they'd be kind of boring to put into a video. Like, I think watching all of that, um, uh, all of the parking lot work might just it, it wasn't fun to watch, I don't think. So we're keeping that kind of work for those live streams in particular. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Tune in uh, for a live stream and it's going to be a lot of fun. But no, what have we been doing here? Um, we're building these group ticket sale buildings and we're taking a ton of influence from the main gate building that we had built, I think episode one. So yes, a lot of the same pieces came over here. A lot of the same styling has come over with this as well, but I did wanna differentiate these a little bit. So we're doing 
a little bit of just some different stylistic things here. You can see this little tower going in and on an angle. It's it's making some cool, interesting sight lines. And I think as you, quote, drive up to the park, um, it'll kind of bring some sort of continuity over to this area. And to be honest, these are kind of out of the way. So this one in particular is right next to the bus depot that we built. So, I mean, if you're thinking about this logically, the buses would probably bring large groups of people and they'd have to walk over to the ticket sale area or the group ticket sale area to buy their group tickets and get all of that sorted out. So this makes sense over here. And then eventually, way later on in this uh, time lapse, we're going to be copying this building and then tweaking it a little bit and then putting it on the other side, which is where the uh, pedestrian parking lot. No, pedestrian is not the right, right word. Uh, general parking lot is for cars. Uh, we'll be going over to that as well. But um, I guess in our hiatus here, uh, something we should probably talk about is the theme makers toolkit that just came out. So as you know, or I hope you know, um, we can now put in custom assets into the game, which is really awesome. And I just don't have the know-how. Um, I need to go in and start learning Blender and learn how to model things and then export them into the game. But I, I wanna put this out to anybody. Um, I'm not sure how I would do this so much, but if anybody is into modeling and knows anything about the Theme Maker's Toolkit and is willing to do some sort of project, uh, let me know in the comments below. I, I want to get a Cedar Flags custom sign into the game. I have the logo. It, we already have a sign, as you can see, but it's just a billboard. I'd love to put a real physical sign up on the top of uh, our little gate area, and I'd love to have just individual channels or individual letters. I say channels. Uh, channel letters are actually a thing in the sign industry. Um, they're just, you know, unique letters that are one piece, and they're put together on this thing called a channel, which is like a bar that runs across the back. So they're all kind of put together like that. I'd love to get something like that for this. So I need to figure out how to model stuff in Blender, or if anybody wants to take a shot at it, let me know. I'll find a way to get you guys the logo files since I already have that. And then uh, you guys can give it a shot, make a true three dimensional sign for me, and then I'll put it in the game. And of course, we'll have to have it up on the Steam Workshop as well. So I'm really hoping somebody out there wants to take that challenge on. I'd love to see it happen. It would make so much um, such a better look for this, and it, it's just a really good use of the Theme Maker's Toolkit. Um, while we're on the topic of the Theme Maker's Toolkit, I don't necessarily know how much we want to get into that for this series. I'm sure there's probably going to be props on there that work really well, so I don't think I'm against putting in these custom assets, but I don't want to go like over the top as well. I think like little props here and there would be good. I've seen a lot of like boxes and uh, just like backs, back end stuff like pallets and that kind of stuff. That's going to be really cool to put in, but I don't know if we're going to be putting in like anything too major. But then again, I haven't really explored the Steam Workshop collections yet. So if you guys have any suggestions on what to download and what's really awesome to check out, of course, leave those in the comments as well. I do always uh, read all of the comments, even if I don't respond to them. And uh, you guys always come up with good stuff. So again, anything, any thoughts you have, put them down below that like button and uh, we'll see what we can do with that. But no, you're seeing some of the work now um, off in the distance. We did a little bit of just road work, which was a long, tedious process. I'm not entirely happy with how all of the roads came out roads in this game obviously we don't have like real roads because there are no cars in this game so they're all fake roads um and then uh we have all of these art blocks we're using as actual street lines so the art blocks are obviously straight and doing curves is very very wonky and not exactly smooth, but we get away with it because we say that these are outside the park and we don't have to really care all that much about it. And again, I'm trying to kind of keep the prop count down a little bit, so I don't want to go like super over the top in terms of all of the uh, all of the stuff that's outside of the park uh, gates there. Um, I just I feel like this is all going to be background anyway, so we are. I'm trying to limit what I'm doing. I'm not entirely sure if I want to go through and put a bunch of uh, like 
actual cars down. Actually, you know what? The Theme Maker Toolkit might have a bunch of cool car props that we could put in. Because as of right now, the, the cars that are in the game, they don't have any wheels on them. So every time you put a car down, you technically have to put five props down. So I don't know if that has any effect on performance. I, I'd assume it probably does. But if there are any car props on the Steam Workshop, I might have to look into that and we'll probably play some of those down. Also, I think there's only like five cars in the game natively. So having a variety of cars in our parking lot would probably be pretty cool as well. But um, I don't know. Uh, anyway, what we're doing over here is we're making some sort of back end entrance type thing. You see, there's a little uh, parking ticket booth that I've built and that's going to be the the entrance to the parking area. This goes into the group sale area with this path. And then I, I made this kind of little simple bridge. I really actually like this bridge. It's really cool, even though it's really simple. But this is kind of like a an access point for maybe like any sort of deliveries or probably not deliveries, but probably like maintenance trucks or tractors or anything like that that have to get into the park they can get around this way we have that little gate there with a presumably opening set of gate gates i guess yeah the the fence with the gates over there i guess is the right word to say there but yeah this is all kind of backstage type stuff hopefully no one's going to be walking down that way of course i could probably put in the little barriers that we have in the game i didn't do that but then again, I didn't think we needed to, but we'll, we'll pay attention to that. And all of this kind of is around this cool little lake. I, I was looking at this area. We have our entrance road and then the park that starts on the other side of this. And we had like this little awkward open space here. And I didn't really want to just put trees down. And so I decided we're going to put some water in. The water looks great. And it just it's a way to take up a lot of space without adding like a bunch of props to the game. Now, I don't know if water is very heavy for the computer to render. I'm not sure. I guess you guys could let me know if you know. But to me, it makes more sense to put water down instead of just like 50 to 100 trees just scattered around the area. So of, as I say that, I'm actually putting trees down. But like I said, this this limits the amount of trees we need to put down here. And also we can wrap this pond around the entire park if we want to. And then we have that giant lake at the back of the park. So we can kind of tie all that together. And I've been kind of wondering to myself, maybe like when I started this project, when we started the series, I kind of had this ambitious idea that we're going to make this really large park. It's going to be really cool. Um, but as I've been building it, it's been what, two years now? And it's it's we still only have so much of this done and the computer, the, the performance on my computer has just been steadily decreasing. The live portion, as you'll see when we get to it, is is just the frame rate so bad now. So I'm thinking maybe with the water around the park, we'll kind of limit the space we have to work with in the future here. And then we'll kind of work around that in a tasteful manner. So maybe we'll have like a, a, a water locked park instead of this like sprawling thing but we'll see we'll work that in as we get down to that part but uh you saw me just copy over a building and this is me taking the easy way out i guess um no uh we have this building i figured you know what we, we'd probably build about the same style of building anyway so we just copied the group sale building from the bus side and we're now over on the uh, general parking area and we're, we're gonna modify this building you saw us take a little bit of a an angle to that one section that looks like a bathroom but it is actually our guest spawner um that adds a little bit of variety here it actually works with the curve that we have on our path over there and then of course we had this pavilion that we already had from the bus depot area and we're bringing that over for kind of like a picnic area so this is going to be like if if a family just drove two hours to get here they don't want to go into the park just yet they want to maybe sit down get everything together and then go into the park this is going to be that maybe they brought some in outside food into the area they're going to eat before they go in and buy our burgers at inflated pricing that you know we have to charge to keep the park in business but um yeah this is that kind of thing over there so that worked out pretty well again just taking what we already had and trying to use it and manipulate it to make it look a little bit different but um it, it, it works and i think that's something that I, I need to start trying to do a little bit more of 
not in like just copy and paste mode, but you know, take influence from things. And I've, I think I've been getting a lot better at that throughout my Planet Coaster career. But um, no, we have all of this land still behind all of this that we have to do a lot of uh, you know work to yet. And of course, the parking lot isn't exactly finished. So if you caught that live stream we did, um, you'll know that I had said that we're probably going to have to finish this in another sitting. We probably were, I think we were working on it for like four hours. So yeah, we did a lot of work, even though it probably didn't look like a lot of work, but uh, there's still a lot more work to do. And I actually, I like doing the live streams because you guys can actually sit down and see that it, it is just so much work to try to get these episodes out. We had four hours of work and that probably would have got cut down into like a 10 minute time lapse. So just to put things in perspective, you guys can can catch a live stream and, and see how much work actually goes into this. And, you know, it, it, is, it takes time. So um, but anyway, we're uh, just kind of finishing up this little area here by doing some nature work. Again, we're not finished with this at the end of this. We'll, we'll see that in the live portion when we hop over there shortly here. But we're trying to create some sort of divide here. We have this little lake already back there. I wanted to make some sort of natural divide there instead of going through with like a, a full fence over there. So we did a little bit of just terrain work to get some hills going in there to create this little divide. So people, if they're walking on the path, they won't be tempted to like run back to that lake or whatever. I, I don't know why I think about these things as I'm building in this game, but I do. Um, but yeah, that's that's why that's all there. Uh, we're continuing all of this uh, planter work and then getting all these signs kind of situated. I honestly, another thing that I, I just thought of when I, as I was talking about signs earlier, I, I want to see if anybody's out there who's been making like individual letters like a big sign letter. I need to see that pack because then I'd love to spell out group sales on the top of this like long building that we just made. Um, so if anybody knows of any of those, let me know. We're doing a little bit of tweaking of the terrain work here and then we're getting into some of the nature work, just putting some more of these uh, curated flower beds down and continuing this process out. And that's going to pretty much do it for this time lapse. Let's go ahead and hop over to the live portion and check out what we just did. All right, guys, we are live here in Cedar Flags and it is looking like a real amusement park out here now. It is actually really cool. And before we get into what we were just doing over here, let's go ahead and check out what we have over here. This is what we were working on in the live stream. We have another couple points of spawning for the guests and they have to walk over this really awesome little pedestrian bridge. They come down over here and then can then go into the park. So that is a really cool yet again uh, disguised bathroom over here for people to spawn in. And then of course we have all of this parking area. Um, not really sure if this is like to scale as as much as we need, uh, but it, it works for us, and we're gonna we're gonna say it is as much parking as we need. So there's still obviously a lot of unfinishedness over here, if that's a word. But we're gonna be doing another live stream probably uh, on a weekend. So midweek, look at your sub boxes on YouTube for the reminder for that, and then of course set the little bell reminder or whatever you have to do to get that all figured out but no this is what we were doing in the live stream or in the time lapse rather and as i said the the frame rate's pretty low now so i'm gonna actually run this in pause so you're not gonna see anybody walking around but um this is a little group sales area obviously it's not like actually gonna sell anything actually i think these just sell like the the priority passes so really our information booths don't really do all that much um i don't think actually let me grab one of these and they sell just priority passes. So it would be really cool if they had to go up to these to get tickets before they went into the gates of the park. But unfortunately, they don't do that. And uh, they're just here for show, really. And then, of course, another bathroom with a guest spawner. And I like this little area of the park. Now that we have actually now that we have these lakes here, I, I really like this area over here. So um, I think what might happen here is we already have this lake that goes over to here. We might actually extend this lake even more, depending. It's just a really good way to border the park, I think. And then it's a really good uh, it kind of defines the park borders a little bit better than what we have here, which is just, 
it, it kind of is weird because really you'd expect the park to go up to this edge of whatever the shore is, but we can only go this far. So I think having like an artificial border over here would be kind of cool anyway. So that's going to be, I think, what we're doing over here. We're still going to have a lot of room here. So we're going to have probably another coaster here, maybe another coaster over here. I still want to do like a hotel over here and then potentially one more coaster over here. So we're, we're kind of limited on park space a little bit, but I think it's going to work out for the best for us moving forward. Um, I guess the last thing to talk about is this little area over here. This is the second group sales uh, area over here, and it just ties all of this together. I'm actually really happy with how this this pathing and plaza work turned out over here. Unfortunately, we had a little bit of a spot where we couldn't get um, the, the path to connect up, but we've hidden that with a couple of bushes here, and it's gonna be kind of interesting. Honestly, I don't think we're gonna watch this too much when we're uh, playing the game to see if people are walking through these bushes. I'm sure they will, but I'm not sure we, we care all that much. But um, like I said, we still have a little bit of work to do on a live stream to finish out this nature work around the outside of the park, and then we'll get back into the core of the park. I think, for the most part, as far as episodes go, I think we're done outside of the park, and I think the next project will be back in the park. We're going to be doing some sort of ride or something. Um, I, I do want to put like a restaurant together as well, which now that we have all of this lakefront area over here, we might do like a cool diner setting over here, just like on the lake. That could be kind of fun um, around the Cedar Speedway area just to fit that theme. So yeah, um, I'm not really sure what we're doing next in the next episode. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment if you want to see something in specific. We could go in with another roller coaster. We could do some more flat rides. I know we need some more flat rides, so that might be on the top of the list. But uh, that's going to be it for this one. Like it if you liked this episode. Thumbs down if you disliked it. Check out my Patreon if you'd like to support me. Hit that join button if you'd like to support me directly here on YouTube. And until next time, guys, I'll see you back here in Cedar Flags.